Greetings, YouTube. Um, my coworker gave me this as a birthday gift uh, in September of 2022. Uh, this is a cast iron die. It weighs 200 grams. That's seven ounces. Um, it is very, very heavy. And I didn't even know they made cast iron D6s. Uh, and I have located them on Amazon and you can get them. Uh, I plan on getting a second set because another more, I, I have one, I'm going to get a set of them because I plan on turning one of them into a mace because this is a perfect size and weight for a light mace head. Um, this one will be left unmolested. It was the gift I received. Um, and as soon as I picked it up, I was just like, is this, ca and I took a magnet on my pocket and I checked it. Yes, I, I carry a magnet in my pocket. It is in fact cast iron. Um, and it got me thinking as I'm holding it in my hand of a sling weight. Why did it make me think of a sling weight? Well, in the classical era, uh, Greek and Romans would use lead bullets that could often be in the 8 to 16 ounce range. So roughly this weight. In fact, if a lead uh, weight were this size, it would weigh weighs more than 7 ounces. It's being much denser than steel or cast iron, I should say. Um, and I... Uh, Imagine it would be, you know, very cool, which, and suddenly it clicked. That's something I had read just a few days ago, dealing with slings. I think it was on, um, I think it was on uh, the Big Purple uh, RPG Net. And they were talking about um, the fact that slings are not simple weapons. I've just talked about this before. The problem that 3.5 and Pathfinder had mm -hmm. is that, uh, they one second. No, oh, something wants me to do something. Correct. Um, they have a confusion between simple construction and simple in use. Now, a spear is both. It is simple in construction. It is simple in use. It's a blade. It's a dagger on a stick. It's pretty much straightforward. You can make one out of bamboo. Just cut the end off, and you got a spear. Okay. A sling is a different beast. A sling is easy to make if you know how to make work with uh, cordage or leather. You can make uh, a fully functional sling that can kill small game out of nothing but plant cordage and use rocks for ammo. Um, I would recommend looking up uh, the YouTube channel Primitive Technology. He does amazing work about primitive technology, what you can actually do um, with it, uh, using no tools whatsoever other than the ones he himself has made while well, in the for in the in the rainforest he literally walked into the rainforest with nothing but a pair of shorts on and has made an and an himself entire small village of different structures and and things over the years um and you can also make them out of leather if you have a if anyone in your, in your group has like a leather working skills they had skills to require to make a, de a decent sling uh, military ones would probably have been made out of leather but when you're using a sling, it isn't the same thing as throwing. I can throw this. So I'm not going to be able to throw it very hard. I'm not going to be able to throw it very far. Um, but I could. And the, the throwing motion is very well known to all of us. We are good at it. Humans are, are good at throwing. Um, but when you use a sling, it's not. Because when you let go of that, it you are pointing in the direction the thing goes. That's not how a sling works. If you let go of your swing, whether you're doing an over or an undercast, if you let go when it's pointing at, at your target, it's either going to go right into the ground or going to go straight up. It's not going to get anywhere near your, <clears throat> the person you or object you want to hit. You need to release this, release it when it is vertical, either down or up, depending if you're doing an over or an under uh, uh, cast with your, with your sling. Um, and that takes quite a bit of training to figure out how to do that and then to do it with any kind of accuracy. Of course, if you're working it's like military units. They're not aiming at individual targets. They're aiming at, you know, volleys. So they're a lot less picky about their targets. But if you're lobbing something this size, this heavy, at a target, and there's 100, 200 of them flying out of the sky, it's a really great way of disrupting an entire cavalry unit. Now, isn't it? Because uh, horses aren't really armored very often. Only permanent officers and really wealthy dudes. Um, the rest of them don't have armor. And if these start pelting out of the sky, it's going to cause a whole lot of hassles. And whatever hassles you can cause may or make cause injuries to the horses or the soldiers, and that's better than dead soldiers. Dead soldiers, they're just rallying points. Wounded, screaming soldiers, 
the Eldu moralize the hell out of people and take a lot more resources to get take care of than will dead ones. Dead soldiers are less of an impact on your enemy's resources than live ones, and the live ones are more demoralizing. Um, lots of people have learned that, that learned that um, the hard way when we have found ourselves in asymmetric warfare. Um, and even though the simple construction, it is a complex device to use. And so someone suggested using three different types of slings. Now we have what he, he referred to as the short sling. And the short sling, or it would be using the classic uh, P1 stats of um, medium 1d4 damage times 2 critical, bludgeoning, 50 foot increment, uh, simple, quote unquote simple, and weapon thrown. And that would be your, not quite a toy, but but not the kind of thing that you're using for combat. It's that kind of thing you maybe you're hunting with, or the kind of thing that somebody might make when they're in a survival situation. Then he suggested a long sling, and this is the military version, and a medium would be a 1d6, and uh, would have a longer increment. I can't remember what you said it was. You get the, you know, obviously longer. It's got a longer uh, length of cordage, so it's going to be able to have a bigger arc. Yeah, you get more energy. Uh, you, you know how it works. Um, and lots of people on my channel know a heck of a lot more about maths than I do. Uh, and then lastly would be the staff sling. And the staff sling is two-handed and gives you a lot of energy because essentially you're becoming a trebuchet. That's essentially what you're doing. It's designed very similar to a, to a tre trebuchet. It's just that the cordage is the cord is about the same length as going to be on a standard sling. It's just you're going to be going and it's going to be going overhand, and so you get even further um, more energy to, into it because you're using both hands, and because again you have the staff as well as the as the the, the cordage on the sling itself. So you get a bigger arc. Um, it's kind of the way in that ladle significantly increases the energy in such uh, in in the dart thrown because it's essentially making your arm 18 inches longer. Um, and I think that's a very solid uh, model. And, a, and in the case of, say, for example, and lots of times people think, think of halflings as having a particular affinity for them, I would allow halflings to have the ranges that may be, there may be a range difference between the small and the medium. I'm not sure there is. Um, but I would let them do medium damage because they're supposed to have an affinity for them. Um, so they're doing more damage. They're doing a die damage above what, what a, a, a small person under normal circumstances would because they've practiced it with them so much. And I really like that model. But here's the something else that got me made me smile when I saw this. Um, and I'm saying, I'm at, I'm at work. <laughs> I got this at work. So like I'm between cycles. I got this at my table. I'm going, punk, the punk on the table. <laughs> um Imagine somebody gets uh, some some treasure out of a hoard of some variety. Maybe it's off a dead body. Maybe it's so they just find it, you know, off uh, in, in a treasure hoard. And in it is a bag of cubes. There are ten of them. Each weighs eight ounces, um, and they are made out of cold iron. Now, making a cube out of cold iron is a heck of a lot easier than making other types of weapons out of cold iron because a cold iron to be keep it keep it cold you have to not heat it up too much it has to be, heat, be heated below a certain level otherwise you lose its cold concept um, so hammering an object into just a cube is a much easier than trying to make an arrowhead or a spearhead out of it or a dagger blade or something like that um, you find and so, so any fighter worth his salt gonna look at that and go hey cool ammo for taking on fiends and, and fey so they use it because maybe that may be the only cold iron they got in the party. It's not a common material. Not everybody carries cold iron around. So they slip this and slip one of these things into their, whew, they launch it. And as soon as they, they roll to hit you, the GM say, roll D6. And they roll D6 and they get a six. And suddenly the missile goes pew, and becomes six missiles. And instead of doing one D6 damage, does 66 damage which makes a fiend or a fey very unhappy. And so you've got nine of these things left, and now you know what they do. Every time you launch it, you roll a d6, and that's how many missiles you get. And I think that's a really 
clever, not overwhelming thing because it's it's much less powerful than most. You know, it's less powerful than like your average fireball because the most you can do is going to be five or six die six, um, and it's not doing any kind of lingering. It's not setting anything on fire. So you know, it's 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 a good spell equivalent, but it's not going to break the bank in anybody's you know way, shape, or form. And I think it's got some nice flavor. That was just inspired by the fact that I have a cast iron <laughs> D6 now. And hopefully in the near future, I'm going to have one, and then I can turn it into a mace. I've already figured out how I'm going to do it. Um, so that'll be fun. Uh, especially if you happen to be for someone that plays GURPS or Fudge. <laughs> when, the G- when the GM puts it out on the table and says, no arguments. <laughs> um, so let's talk about slings. How have you used them in your campaigns? Do you think that the, the model of there being a non-military version, a military version, and then the staff sling makes sense? Because the sling is far more complex than people seem to think it is. But because, again, because there's a difference between simplicity of construction and simplicity of execution. And, again, so many things in games make no sense. I, by the way, was incredibly, unbelievably thrilled. When I read 3rd edition originally, and they got the weight on bullets for slings correctly. Correct. I, was, it was, I think it's the only time in the entire history of D&D, or Pathfinder for that matter, where the weight of a weapon actually was something even vaguely close to what it was in the real world. 